Dogs that are built well can stand long days of hard work. A neck of good length, well set into a working shoulder assembly, lends greater ease for tracking, retrieving, and carrying. Good proportion lends suppleness to the back and strong thrust from hind quarters. Strong pasterns and thick pads help reduce the shock of sudden impact. A good working dog has limbs that extend freely and has balance of body for trotting long hours. Strong hindquarters provide strength for quick bursts of speed and thrust for leaping. All these are the blueprint for a sound structure and through this comes the importance of angulation. Essential to the appearance and qualities of endurance in all dogs are the structural features that govern balance and the ability to move freely, called angulation. Good angulation facilitates a smooth ground covering stride. Balance facilitates good foot timing. Joints that control movement should flex easily and smoothly, providing strong thrust from the rear with spring and resilience in the forehand. The swing and extension of the foreleg should coordinate with action of the rear so that there will be no overstepping or interfering. As a general rule, the feet should move rather close to the ground so as to avoid excessive bending of the joints, which can be inefficient and tiring. Poor angulation shortens stride because the bones meeting at the shoulder joints and hips are steeply set forming joints with wide open angles. Swing of the blades and the upper arms is restricted as is bend and thrust from the rear. Dogs so constructed must take shorter steps and their action is bouncing rather than smooth. This dog is too straight, both front and rear, but in spite of this fault and a short stilted gait, his body appears to be in balance and he may be better off than a dog lacking balance, where one end has to compensate for faultiness in the other. Before we start, let's familiarize ourselves with some of the major parts of the dog's skeletal anatomy. Cervical vertebrae consist of seven neck bones. Whether it's a Chihuahua or a Great Dane, it's seven. Thoracic vertebrae consist of 13 bones. The first nine dorsal spines is the withers area. Lumbar vertebrae consist of seven bones at the croup area. Rib cage, chest, or thorax. Sternobrae or the sternum. Manubrium or the breastbone. Pelvis, ilium at the upper part and ischium at the buttocks area femur or the upper thigh, the scapula or the shoulder blade. The line at the center is the scapular spine, humerus or the upper arm. A common method for evaluating slant and placement of the bones in the front assembly is to take a line from the uppermost edge of the scapula to the foremost prominence of the humerus and go from there to the elbow. As a general rule, the distance between these points of reference should look or feel about equal, and if the front is balanced, the elbow will set approximately on or close to an imaginary vertical line dropped from the caudal or posterior angle of the blade. These are not actual bone measurements, only landmarks that can be easily palpated. It is important that the dog stand naturally with its legs perpendicular to the ground. Another way to assess angulation is to feel the scapular ridge that runs up the near center of the blade and figure the angle of an imaginary vertical line dropped from the upper tip to the ground. The slant of the humerus may be determined by a line from its upper center to its lowest end, not to the elbow. These measurements will differ from those taken by the method described previously, but the findings are more realistic as to the actual bone placement and joint angulation. 
Note that a line extended upward along the scapular ridge concurs with the apex of T2, which is the second of the nine thoracic spines that form the withers, while slight variation may occur between T1 and T3, depending on conformation or shift in body posture. Radiographic studies reveal T2 as the normal location for the upper tip of the scapula in the average dog. In this diagram, notice how the hypothetical 45 degree layback of the shoulder blade would set the shoulder joint in advance of the manubrium, where there would be no support of the ribs, and any upward swing would cause interference with cervical musculature. In the hind quarters, length of the croup and bend of stifle and hock are more clearly visible, or at least are easy to feel under a heavy coat. However, Variables in measurements can occur here as well, depending on how the dog stands. He may be crouching due to uneasiness or standing broached because of discomfort. Length and slope of the pelvic assemble can be approximated by taking a line from the forward edge of the ilium to the ischium or buttock. However, the exact location of the point of the buttock can be misleading because its shape and tilt may differ with the type of dog. These are some of the ideal movement of different breeds on a trot. watching.